Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. We are coming to you from Washington's nicest indoor shooting facility. Of course, that being Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. Listen, I need to do a follow up on this video right here. Now, this video had a lot of good hits, but unfortunately, I ended up having to pull it down due to some copyright infringement issues, which was my fault and so the video needed to come down it had to do with some graphics that i had used and created some problems for some other folks that was candidly unwarranted but there's been yet another article published about mr tom harris a in-home ffl down in lewisville texas kind of in the dallas fort worth area actually one of the largest most productive home-based ffls anywhere in north texas well as you know he is now the victim of joe biden and the atf's all-out hell-bent war on all FFLs, whether they're retail operations or home-based, and they have decided to go back and reopen several old cases of his, ones that he'd been previously cleared on, but now they need to reopen them because, see, they need to use that to revoke his FFL license. There's a lot at stake, and I think we all owe it to Mr. Harris and everybody in this community to rally around him when the cause is just, and the cause is just here. So today, Let's spend a couple minutes, let's get you all educated on why the ATF wants to destroy this man. Okay, so like I said, I did this video right here and it ended up getting about 150,000 views, which is pretty good for this channel. Unfortunately, I ended up having to pull it down. I had some issues with some of the graphics I used. The person who complained about it had a legitimate beef, so I am not in any way, shape, or form disparaging anybody except for this guy who screwed up and put those graphics on there. However, what I was trying to do with the video was help out Mr. Harris. I have had the pleasure of actually speaking with Mr. Harris on the phone. He's a wonderful gentleman. And as we know, for some home-based FFLs, it is really just kind of a hobby. Um, they might make a little bit of money, but really it's kind of a side gig. Um, for Mr. Harris, a disabled father of five, well, his FFL business is his entire livelihood. Now, way back in about 2007, 2008, 2009, the ATF did an audit. They do this on FFLs all the time. And they did find some minor, minor clerical errors, okay? And they, you know, scolded him for him and told him that he needed to clean it all up. And there was some rumors that Mr. Harris himself has some serious vision problems. And so some of those clerical errors may have been caused by his poor eyesight. He has since employed new people to take care of the paperwork. Apparently, there's no no problems. I should point out that none of the allegations against Mr. Harris and his FFL involve any kind of recent problems, but ones that he and his attorney both claim that they were previously cleared of. And when I say cleared, what it means is, is that the violation may have occurred, but it was such that it was so light that there was never a revocation action. Uh, Mr. Harris had to tighten some things up, did so, and at that point, everything is good. Well, you fast forward now to the year 2023. Well, apparently all bets are off because they have now since reopened that entire case and they are moving for a full revocation of Mr. Harris's FFL. That's right. They want to punch this gentleman's ticket. They want to put him out of business. They essentially want to remove his entire livelihood for him over clerical errors that are 15 and 16 years old that were previously investigated and he was previously cleared of. Now, of course, if this was a actual regular criminal case involving a true system of justice, well, we have this little thing called double jeopardy that would preclude it. But no, you see, these are civil administrative actions conducted by an out of control, completely reckless executive agency, which is out there hell bent on enforcing certain political agendas through whatever means necessary. What Mr. Harris here is caught up in is the absolute complete onslaught on the FFL industry. And while we have focused a lot on what's happening to the retail operations nationwide, let me assure you that there is a much much larger warfare going on home-based FFLs. And if you don't believe that, check out this video or this video right here where we're talking about the new rules that ATF is gonna be promulgating in order to shut down basically every single home-based FFL. Now, the most important thing is, is that we in the 2A community need to understand that businesses such as Mr. Harris's and all FFL businesses are essential to us being able to actually exercise what is supposed to be an inalienable right. If you have a right to a firearm, but you have absolutely no legal access to any firearms, then that really isn't a right. 
And it is for that reason that we as a community need to collectively rally and support people such as Mr. Harris and anyone else who's being unjustly ramrodded essentially here by this out of control ATF. Now on the previous video, we linked up his Give, Send, Go account. We're gonna do it again. We're gonna put the links for it. There it is right there. And we're gonna put the links down below in the description box. I ask all of you, whether you can give a little or give a lot. We need to all send a very clear message to the ATF, the Department of Justice, and the Biden administration. That very clear message is, is no, hell no, you are not gonna be able to get our rights. And if you come after one of us, you are essentially coming after all of us. Let us also remember that unlike many home-based FFLs where this is essentially a hobby or a way to help out a few friends or family, this is a disabled gentleman who's the father of five. This is his sole source of income. This is the sole source by which he supports his entire family. And for that reason, I ask all of us to think hard and long about this and help this guy out. Listen, we're gonna put links for everything down below. We'll put links for the stories that we relied upon in helping bring you this video. If you have any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is right down there in the description box also. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.